Hi all, welcome to the Jenkins Online Meetup. Uh, today is uh, August uh, 19th, and we have uh, Keja and Tim uh, who will present a GitHub app authentication and uh, um, Checks API integration. Uh, just uh, to introduce the Jenkins Online Meetup, uh, it's a regular online meetup organized by Jenkins contributors where we present various stories related to Jenkins use cases, play games, uh, development tools, and basically anything about the Jenkins project and the Jenkins community. Um, and uh, we invite everyone to participate if you're interested to know more or if you want to join a live discussion and discuss uh, your topics and we are always looking for speakers. Uh, if you want to know more about the online meetups, uh, yeah, there is a meetup page on meetup.com so you can uh, subscribe to the meetup announcements here and uh, um, if you're interested uh, to participate etc we also have an online meetup page on uh, the Jenkins website so here you can find information about uh, what we do, how to participate, how to apply as a speaker if you want to present something. And again, any topics about Jenkins are welcome. Today, uh, as I said, we have a presentation about uh, uh, modern GitHub integrations. So we'll have a presentation uh, how you can authenticate Jenkins uh, to GitHub using uh, GitHub app authentication. Um, and then we will talk about GitHub Checks API and uh, support for reporting uh, static analysis and code coverage reports uh, to GitHub Checks. Um, and uh, if you have uh, any questions uh, during uh, the presentation, uh, please ask uh, them using Zoom q &A. So you should uh, see a q &A button on the Zoom panel. Um, you can uh, ask a question at any moment and then uh, we will ask uh, the presenters uh, after the presentation or maybe answer the questions that's in front of us there. Uh, also, if you want to have a, a discussion about particular topics, uh, we once we finish the recording, we will have all the record discussion uh, where basically we will grant everybody voice permissions. So we will have a kind of expert zone when, uh, where we can discuss any questions uh, related to the talk uh, and uh, maybe to other Jenkins use cases. Uh, please remember about uh, code of conduct uh, and yeah. Quickly, just a bit uh, kind, and uh, um, yeah, again, uh, all these meetups are organized by contributors. We will appreciate any feedback, uh, and uh, we invite uh, you to participate in all the discussions. After the meetup, uh, there is a Gitter channel specifically for GitHub Checks API project, and we also appreciate uh, feedback from uh, meetup participants. So there is a feedback form. I will share a link uh, in the chat later. And uh, yeah, we will appreciate any feedback so that we could uh, make uh, our meetups uh, better. Slides are already published. So again, I will uh, um, uh, provide uh, the link uh, um, in the chat. Okay, uh, so I guess I can hand over the presentation to team. And meanwhile, uh, yeah, we'll probably launch the poll with a few questions. Uh, yeah, they may help us uh, to get more information about your big background and interests uh, with regards to uh, GitHub integrations. So again, we will appreciate the feedback. And team, the floor is yours. Okay, you can hear me all right? Yes. Cool. Hey everyone, so I'm Tim. Um, I'm a Jenkins core maintainer and a lead software engineer at Kanos. Um, I've been working with Jenkins for about the last eight years or so. And I've been maintaining a, maintaining a couple of plugins for the last two years, and Jenkins Core Maintainer for the last six months or so. Um, so today I'm here to talk to you about um, GitHub Apps. So this was something that I contributed to the GitHub Branch Source plugin back in March or April or so. Um, it allows you to instead of using a um, personal user token for a real user allows you to actually act as a machine user, which the primary benefit to start with is much higher rate limits. So many people will be familiar with the 2000 rate limit and hit, and hitting and having to wait for their Jenkins to catch up, especially on bu busy um, organizations. So, so just as a, um, about the minimum gain you get here is you go from 2000 uh, calls an hour to 5,000 calls an hour. Uh, which is really huge for a lot of places. 
Um, but that also scales with your organization as your organization grows. Um, so for an organization with a few hundred repositories to in the thousands, you get up to 12 and a half thousand an hour. And if you pay GitHub more money and you go into the enterprise plan, you can actually go up to 20,000 an hour as well. Um, so that's kind of behind the scenes um, improvement, but for ease of use and onboarding, you have user independent authentication. So you don't need to create an actual user. You don't need to create an email address. You don't have to have someone associated with it. You don't have to worry about when someone leaves. It's a machine user. Um, you get fine grained permissions management. So you don't have to just um, give it right access all over the place. Some people even give it owner access so it automatically gets right access. You don't have to do that anymore. Um, and a great benefit, which Kizzy will be talking to you about soon, is access to the GitHub Checks API, where you can put the results from the, from the job directly into the GitHub UI. You can get your static analysis results and you can rerun jobs. Just It integrates the GitHub developer experience a lot more and stops you from leaving, having to leave GitHub and go to your Jenkins. Um, here's a small tip that um, we hit recently on the Jenkins project infrastructure. Um, you sh if you're a large organization, you should definitely change the rate limit strategy. So there's a default one, which is had for a long time, just to normalize it over the hour. Um, the other one does the throttle at or near the rate limit. You're unlikely to ever get near the rate limit with GitHub apps, but that the default strategy throttles you way too early with GitHub apps. Um, we were seeing, um, we were seeing throttling with 6,000 requests to go. Um, and changing this meant that we were able to complete an org scan for 1600 plugins in under 50 minutes. Um, contrasting that to what we've previously had with a personal user's token, it used to take about four hours to complete an org scan um, because of rate limiting. So that was a huge gain for us um, and just a very easy tick box change um, if you are having any issues um, on live organizations. Um, you can easily, so one thing you may be concerned about is how do I use this in my current pipeline? You might call out to GitHub to do things like add labels to pull requests. You might be using the deployments API to be registering where an app's been deployed to. Uh, you may be pushing code. Um, so you may be automatically detecting stuff in your pipeline and maybe automatically changing files or publishing releases. Um, so good news is it's very easy. Jenkins handles this for you behind the scenes. Um, so the GitHub app authentication, while not complicated, it's non-trivial. You need to sign requests with JSON web tokens. Uh, you need to have two different authentication tokens, a like authentication token and a, an Indian access token. So while not complicated, it's something that's abstracted away for you. And all you have to do is just act like this is a regular credential in Jenkins. So you see here, there, this is just the standard with credentials. You even look it up as a username password and in your password variable, you'll get the GitHub access token and you can use that just as normal. Uh, the example here is to making a check run um, if you're wanting to make a custom check run, but um, I'm using this to add labels to pull requests and to call the deployments API with no issue. And we're also actually yeah, publishing changes to GitHub as well by um, changing the files in our pipeline and committing back and that all just works. Um, so that, and there's a blog post which we'll see afterwards which has all this in it as well. Um, so I'm just gonna give a quick demo of how you set this up and just point you at some of the documentation and some of the resources available. Um, so the first thing that you need is, so this is using, it's called the GitHub branch source plugin. Um, it's installed by, it's one of the plugins that's suggested by default. So if you install your Jenkins and you just say select and, recommended plugins, you'll get this automatically. Um, and there's a documentation guide here for GitHub app authentication. It's on the front page of the readme. And if you just go through here, you get all the details that you need. It tells you what permissions you need to set this up um, and all the permissions and all the fields that you need to fill out and just all the details. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna relatively quickly just go through it with you. Um, so the first thing that you need to do is you need to set up a GitHub app. Oops, that's not quite the right place. Um, so I'm using this on my personal organization. Um, it doesn't have to be an organization, you can use it on your personal account as well. Um, I'm just gonna sign up a new GitHub app. I'm gonna call it Jenkins um, Meetup Demo. 
I'm just going to put a home page URL just of my um, GitHub profile. I uh, don't need to worry about any of that. So you need to set up a webhook, even if it's not activated. And I am using this locally, but so you just need to set a valid URL. So again, I'm going to set this to my profile and it's not active. Um, actually, I will just leave it active just to show you. Um, you need to pick the permissions that you need. So there's some minimum permissions that you may need, which are detailed in the guide. You may also want to add a few more on as well. Um, so the minimum um, to use GitHub apps um, is just commit statuses, read and write, and pull request read, um, and contents read. Um, you'll quite likely want to increase that though, depending on how you're using Jenkins and GitHub. So I mean, what I'm using is uh, contents write. I'm also using deployments read and write. Um, I'm also using pull request read and write and checks. And for Kishi's demo coming up, you also need read and write here as well. Um, so it's up to you. It just depends on how you're using it. Um, it's easier to set up ahead of time, but you can also update it um, as you want uh, trivially. Um, you may want to set up some event subscriptions here. So things like pull request, check suite, check run, um, push. Um, and you also get the choice of installing it on multiple accounts or just one. Most places will only need it. They'll have it as a private GitHub app and only install it on one organization. Um, but you may have multiple organizations, especially if you're using GitHub Enterprise. So GitHub Enterprise, different teams tend to have their own organization. But with standard GitHub, you may or may not just be running on one organization. Um, just take this any account if you do need to install it on multiple. Okay, so that's the first thing here. So GitHub's now telling me that I must generate a private key. Okay, that's good. So let's do that. You can also go through here and set like a logo and description information about it. So I've just downloaded that Jenkins Meetup PIM key. Um, so the next step here is to just set it up in Jenkins. So you go here to manage credentials and then you go here and add a credential. You want to, you want to pick GitHub app. First thing, so actually, so I want GitHub app ID. So this is just the Jenkins internal ID. Um, the next thing is GitHub app. Um, yeah. So the next thing you need is the app ID. So that's on the general page of the app called app ID. Here, and then I need to add the key. So I'm just going to get the one that was downloaded earlier. Um, so if I just bring up the terminal here, um, it's called Jenkins Meetup. So if I just cat uh, Jenkins downloads Jenkins Meetup PM, and I'm just going to put it onto my clipboard. And if I just paste this in here, uh, and then I'm going to click Test Connection. So what I've seen here is that it didn't work. So there's something wrong. If I click show details, it's telling me here that the private key is not in the correct format. So there's an issue that um, GitHub gives you the private key in PKCS1 format. Um, it's quite difficult. There's no, there's no standard code in Java to work with it. Um, there's some extra libraries you can add and it's a little bit complicated, or you can just convert it. Um, it's trivially convertible. So we're just gonna convert that to um, PKCS8 format. Um, so let me go here. So my current key is this. And it's going to be called new key. If I cat new key and if I put that onto my clipboard again, run that, and that's test connection again. And there's another issue. This is a common issue. Um, you see that GitHub doesn't actually prompt you to install it into your organization. Um, so couldn't authenticate, has it been installed to your organization? Um, so you need to go to this install button here and click install. And then how, now you can choose. So this is another benefit is you can select here which, which repositories you want it to have access to. You, um, easiest thing is all, but depends on your threat model and just how you want to see how your organization is structured and, and how your GitHub is structured. Um, but for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to uh, click all. 
and that's now installed. So let's try test the connection again. Okay, so that worked. You'll also see this help text here alongside all of these, um, tells you where to find it. And the help text here also tells you that you need to um, do the description. But I would just always recommend when you're setting this up, just using the um, test connection button. Um, there's an advanced feature here. If you want to have a um, GitHub app installed across multiple, multiple organizations, you have to specify which one it's um, connected to uh, just because of a internal implementation detail in Jenkins, it's quite difficult to share that information. Um, so it needs to be set on each credential currently. Um, so I'm just gonna test connection one more time. It's okay, so let's save that. And now for the end bit where we hope everything works. So I'm going to call it timj.org. It's a GitHub organization. And yeah, see that was pre-populated. Um, and I've just picked the credential and the GitHub app has been verified. It's showing that it's all authenticated. You also know it says 5,000. If I was using a personal token, that would just say 2,000. Um, one thing to note is you do have to specify the owner here. It needs to be, um, even if you've set it to be a different one in the credential, they both need to match. Um, but let me just save that. And you'll see here that it's connecting GitHub app for timja.org. And that's all going through quickly. And you'll see they're all starting to show up and trying to start build. And that's all working. So that's, um, that's the end of my demo. Thank you for your attention. I think there's one thing in Q&A. How can we raise PR in GitHub using the hub pull request command using GitHub app auth? So raise PR in GitHub. So, um, so that I think I answered that um, during the slides. So with, with hub PR, you need to provide an API token in some way and you just use that with credentials um, that, that I showed to, and inside of the closure, you will have a access token available to you and it should just work as normal. Tim, Tim, I don't understand why I would want to do that. Can you, I, I use the hub pull request for command all the time, but I don't understand why I would prefer to use the app, the GitHub app authentication token instead of my personal token for a pull request. I think it's in context of doing it inside of Jenkins. So you've got an automated process that, gener that changes some files or generates some files, and then you want a pull request created uh, for review. Thanks. Cool. If there's no other questions, then we'll go on to yep. Kishi. Yeah, so just be proceed because yeah, GitHub app authentication is basically a foundation feature which un enables uh, many additional integrations in Jenkins. And now uh, we'll see um, a few examples for user-facing features uh, which uh, become available with GitHub app authentication. Uh, we've also got one more question here. Um, instead of curl, is it possible to use PowerShell command, e.g. invoke REST method? Absolutely, it doesn't matter. Curl is just the example um, there, but all you need to do is just take the access token from the environment variable and pass it through to however you authenticate. Okay. Thank you, team. So let's move on. So I'll uh, start sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. So hello everyone, I'm Kui Zhishun. Today I'm going to share you with my GSOC project, the GitHub Checks API plugin and uh, and currently, I'm an incoming graduate student at Northeastern University, and I'm now in the gap year. And you can find me on social media and uh, GitHub. So first, I want to introduce to the GitHub Checks API. So what is GitHub Checks API? Uh, as Tim has said before, it's based on the GitHub app, 
and it's a highly customized way to integrate CI tools to make reports for PR. And so for check if you have status, which now we are using this to indicate the current stage of a Jenkins build, and you got the conclusion and uh, the annotations. The annotations are great because you can um, make wordings and notices. Oh, sorry. Uh, you can make wordings and notices on specific lines of a code. Uh, and those annotations are just like the comments you left when you are reviewing other people's code on GitHub. And so that is very convenient to the users. And the next thing is the actions. The actions is kind of another extension point for GitHub. Uh, since you can create many customized actions and the user, when users click on that button, a request will send you send, send to the the integration and uh, you just implement the logic in your integration tools and to handle that and these are the and these are the uh, this is the screenshot i got from the github official document and you see the status and some other information here and you can also say this is the action uh, the rerun action i created earlier Okay, so next I want to explain our motivation for the project. And so first uh, we need to take a look at how Jenkins is, is integrated now is through the GitHub status API. And you will see a short message and the status here, it's, uh, it's implemented by the GitHub branch source plugin. Um, so you can see it's very limited. Um, and if you want to see more, you have to click the details and and you will, it will lead you to the blue ocean view of the build. And, but we know that Jenkins has many plugins. For example, uh, we have the warnings plugin. And so you can see many uh, the warnings from different kinds of static analysis tools. And you can also see the trend of the, for those warnings. Uh, it helps you to maintain your project on code quality. And next we have the coverage API plugin. And so it give you, it can show you the coverage, different kinds of coverage for different files in a very straightforward way. And so we're thinking maybe we can uh, integrate GitHub with them. So for example, there is a source code view from Warnings plugin and we can migrate them to GitHub as the uh, check annotations. As I said earlier, just make this more convenient um, and straightforward for the GitHub users. And so now we have development uh, plugins, uh, like the general API plugin. Uh, we developed this API plugin based on the uh, GitHub uh, checks API semantic meaning. And that we provide this general API because we want to be prepared for similar concept in different platforms uh, like, like GitLab or Bitbucket. And the next thing is we provide an implementation for the GitHub Checks API. And so you can find those two plugins in the GitHub repository. And these two screenshots is a check I made through our implementation. You'll see the annotations. This, this is just a, 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 a demo check. So maybe not, not, not very meaningful, just for uh, sure. And we now have released both plugins. You can search them, just type checks in the uh, Jenkins plugin market and you'll see both plugins. And if you want to try this plugin, uh, you just need to install both plugins on your Jenkins and use the GitHub app credentials for your multi-branch and the GitHub organization project and uh, the support for freestyle project is on the way. We have opened the PR and then we'll, we'll merge the feature soon. So after you install that, you will get, uh, uh, the first one is you will get this uh, stage uh, sta indicators which can show you the current stage of the Jenkins spirit. So uh, next we use those APIs in practice and first we creates to the warning checks, uh, which is powered by Warning's next generation plugin. And so in this plugin, uh, if you if you install this plugin, you can also get the 
uh, warnings on from different tools to GitHub, and you will get the quality gate. The quality gate is uh, shown here as a as a result of the check. And you can also get many statistics for the issues for different severities, and you can also get the annotations. The annotations will just show in the uh, along the code, so it's very uh, easy for you to see what happens to code, and it's, so you can do your fixation very quickly. And now this feature has been enabled on ca.jenkins.io. Uh, so if you want to take a look at the result uh, before you try it. Uh, you just uh, you just go to the uh, uh, set set .io, and I'll show you some here. I just uh, this is just the Git client plugin, and uh, it's hosted on Jenkins organization. So you will get the warning checks, for example. Uh, you'll see those warning checks on uh, like Java check style and different uh, tools, and if you click details. You all go to the uh, check page for this uh, check, and uh, uh, but but uh, I'm th one thing I'm thinking is that uh, uh, since we just reported the result here, so I think many spaces, many functions which had, we have just uh, wasted. It. So I'm thinking whether we can make make greater use of this page. Uh, if you click this you link, you all go to the solution view. Yeah, so it didn't uh, success because of the deployment. So the status here is as well. Mm -hmm. And you, if you want to see the warnings here, they are just the same as those checks here. Mm -hmm. So if you click the link, I also need you to the uh, build page. Okay. And so the and the, at the end, but at the end of the day, you may find there are many some may maybe many warnings that you don't care are for for example maybe the Java doc warnings. So you can just skip uh, add the skip publication checks in the pipeline and script of the warning checks and you uh, you can find more about the uh, pipeline usage in warnings plugins documentation go to the so it will report the uh, github checks by default uh, if you have a github checks api plugin installed and configured right yes it's set as a default mm -hmm. feature And the uh, next, next thing is the coverage checks, which is powered by the code coverage API plugin. And from the coverage checks, we will get the coverage trend and the coverage healthy score and different kinds of coverages. And if I show you more about this. So this is a coverage check. And here's a link to the reference view. So it's it's my Jenkins. So it just needs to do the PR for uh, the last build, uh, the the last build of this PR. If you go to the build of this uh, another build, it, it's the sixth, it's the sixth build. So it's just compared with the last build, and uh, uh, the link will lead you to the reports directly. And you can also disable those this coverage checks feature is also set as default feature. So you can uh, disable them in the in pipeline. And you can also find more about the coverage checks pipeline script in this link. So, and now uh, we are developing more features. For example, we want to add the pipeline support directly from our plugin so that users can publish checks directly uh, in the pipeline script without depending on a consumer plugin. And for example, uh, a simple usage is uh, you just want to uh, create a check, you just set the name, conclusion, and summary. 
and but since we lack the user scenarios now so uh, i didn't think much usage of this uh, maybe maybe one, one the one i'm thinking is uh, just to indicate the current stage uh, of the of, of the jenkins build so if uh, uh, if if one stage takes very long time, so maybe this is useful. And you can find you can uh, left your comments and give us some feedback in this feature. Uh, I I added the link here in the below. So uh, we are glad to receive your feedbacks. And another uh, feature is a rerun request. Uh, for example, the users can request the rerun for field checks directly on GitHub. Um, this is uh, the GitHub UI, and if you trigger the rerun, uh, the Jenkins build will just, uh, the course will show as rerun request by me through the GitHub checks API. And so the effect is, so for example, I'll show you a demo of this feature. Let me check. The, I'll just click the rerun here, and the GitHub will give some feedbacks that you have successfully requested. And let me see. I have received this. I'm using a forward uh, a directing tool, so maybe it's very it's a little bit small. Maybe disconnect or reconnect it. Okay, you can see in the console that received the rerun request through GitHub checks API. And they say, uh, Schedule a rerun for for job, and requested by me. If you put it there, here it goes. It started. Is your link? Uh, if you go to Jenkins, yeah, let's say I just triggered to rerun build here. Uh, there. If you, can, you can see the rerun request by me through the checks API. Okay. okay, so it is ends now. So conclude as finier, just as before because I didn't change anything. Okay. And uh, we this is also still a progress, so you can give us some feedbacks in the request uh, I just dropped the link here let me go mm, so the last thing I want to talk about is uh, to how to consume our API so uh, since there are so many options uh, that you can configure for a check uh, so maybe our uh, the, the, the consumation of our API is somewhat complicated and so you just create a checks details builder and uh, I just add those uh, properties you want to configure for your check. And you just remember to stick to the GitHub um, validation and um, validations because uh, if you don't follow that, it will just fail to creating the checks. So for if you want to create a check like this, uh, you just need to use our API in this way. And uh, you just uh, here the details are just the properties of the check. And I announced that you just create a, uh, just create the publisher from one, and you just uh, uh, invoke the publish method with the details. Beyond all this progress, I made. Yep. So this API is for plugin developers, right? Mm, yes. Uh, so for pipeline steps, API would be different. Basically, what we presented several slides ago. Mm, yes. Uh, yeah, the pipeline is, uh, the pipeline is supported is here. That is much, much more simpler than that. OK. 
Thank yeah, you. And, another, and another thing is that uh, uh, I'll show you how to create actions. So should you make Tendo Jenkins by adding your, uh, adding your customized actions. Uh, if you want to create a button on GitHub, uh, so when the button is clicked, a request will be sent to GitHub app. And uh, you just uh, with the actions uh, add two ac add two actions. Uh, the last uh, the the last parameter is the identifier for the check. And uh, so when you request the, when the users click the button, the identifier which is the last parameter of that method will be sent back to the sent back to Jenkins. Example, uh, if I guess. So. so yeah, obviously these buttons uh, are part of GitHub checks API plugin, not uh, of the generic checks uh, plugin. Mm -hmm. Is this correct? Or... Uh, yes, users can extend, can just create the checks and extend uh, the function. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you click the format, uh, or oops, and click the report. So it will, so you say, you say the pay, payload here, and then you go to the chrome, this, the here, the request to the action, is report, so it's just the identifier you set for the check, and the here, it, because it's a master branch, so the, the pull request is empty. And so if you want to, and then you have to implement uh, those actions, you just need to extend the uh, GitHub event subscriber, which is uh, provided by the GitHub plugin. And uh, you just remember to subscribe the check run event and event to the, uh, implement the event handling logic there. Uh, you can find more examples uh, in the subscribe folder of GitHub plugin. And you can also take a look at our our implementation for the rerun request is still in is still up here. So that's all from my side. I see any questions. Okay. Uh, thanks for your presentation. And yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please ask in Zoom Kony. Uh, we still have some time to discuss them more live. And after that, uh, we will um, switch to of the record discussion. And uh, if you have any feedback, please use uh, the feedback form link uh, we shared in the Zoom chat. Uh, yeah. uh, so one quick question, the GitLab. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the Git, there is a GitLab, uh, um, almost the same, but it's very limited. Uh, I guess uh, if you, uh, the GitLab is just the, looks like the status, uh, API. So I showed you earlier. You can just leave the message and the uh, result of the of the check. And in GitLab, I think it's called uh, status uh, commit commit status. And uh, I don't remember the name. Is status commit? Uh. Thank you. And. Um. Yeah, regarding that, I guess uh, this uh, checks API, uh, it's not limited to uh, source control management systems and source code repositories, but basically you can integrate with other services. So, so for example, yeah, if you want to submit uh, this data to data dog for notifications, to pager duty, et cetera, theoretically you could use the same API. Uh, if you want to notify them, or maybe if you just want to send a message uh, to email, Again, in principle, you could use Checks API for that instead of uh, uh, existing email plugins. Is it right, mm -hmm. or are there some of the, any limitations? Oh, yeah. uh, the rerun will only show for the uh, failed checks. Mm -hmm. And it's also, uh, it's also not merged yet, so it'll be yeah, a new yeah. version. Just the progress. Okay, so I have a question for you uh, regarding uh, GitHub uh, authentication support. So in Jenkins, uh, there are more than 20 plugins uh, which integrate with GitHub, uh, but not all of them uh, support GitHub authentication at uh, this point. So if 
I need to add um, GitHub app authentication support to the plugin, what would be the steps for me? Uh, you uh, should. Wait. You can answer that too. Yeah, I'll answer this one. Um, you shouldn't need to do anything because um, so those plugins will be using a, a username password credential in most cases. So uh, it'll either be a actual username and password, although that's getting deprecated by GitHub in November, I think, um, or it'll be a username and personal access token. Um, and so it's a username password credential. The GitHub app credential basically pretends to be a username password credential. And when the password is asked for, it does the authentication behind the scenes. So it's transparent for both users and plugins. So I'd be very surprised if any plugin actually needs to know that it's um, uh, that you're using GitHub apps behind the scenes. There is a, you can specifically check if you do need to. So the GitHub branch source plugin does need to change the behavior in a couple of cases, um, but that's only due, so certain APIs aren't available to GitHub apps. Um, the, the get me endpoint, for example. Um, so the GitHub branch source uses the get me endpoint to check um, whether you have successfully authenticated, um, but get me doesn't exist um, for GitHub apps. So I think it uses the rate limit API instead. Um, but so you shouldn't need to know is the answer really. Okay, thanks. And it should be a good advantage for users of existing plugins. Okay, it looks like we don't have any questions left in the queue. So I suggest to thank speakers and uh, to switch uh, to the discussion. So thanks team, it's a pleasure. And yeah, we will publish a recording of this presentation uh, uh, later today. If you have any questions, uh, please reduce uh, the Gitter link, jinkcs uh, slash GitHub checks API. And uh, yeah, you can ask any questions related uh, to both authentication and checks API there. Okay, thanks all. I'll stop the recording. But uh, if you have any questions or topics to discuss, please stay online. <laughs>